I think my parents, frankly, still struggle to understand what I do. When I started, you know, I told my parents, like, hey, I got this job. And they said, you know, what are your coworkers like? And I was like, well, there's only two of them, but they're great guys. And they're like, well, what's the office like? And I was like, well, it's, it's an apartment. And they were like, well, at least you're getting paid, right? And I said, well, I'm getting paid in this cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. <laughs> and they were like, wait, is this, like, legit? Cryptocurrency is basically digital money that is outside the control of any central government or bank. And the best known form of it is Bitcoin. Since Bitcoin's start in 2009, it and other cryptocurrencies have evolved, and some now believe they are on the cusp of fundamentally reshaping money as we know it. Olaf Carlson Wee is a leader in this new industry. He famously lived off Bitcoin for years and now runs Polychain Capital, a hedge fund that deals exclusively in cryptocurrency. I got a lot of friends interested in Bitcoin by having them kind of like buy the pizza and then I would send them 20 bucks in Bitcoin. And I actually made like accidentally ended up making friends like thousands and thousands of dollars by doing this. Olaf made his friends and himself so wealthy because the price of Bitcoin has exploded. When Olaf first got paid in Bitcoin, one was only worth around $35. But today, that same Bitcoin will cost you over $4,000, more than three times the value of an ounce of gold. Tell me about what the experience is like of then having to live off of Bitcoin. You know, that was kind of a no-brainer to me. For stuff that I, I couldn't pay with Bitcoin, I would just sell the Bitcoin and use dollars. So I like had a bank account and everything. When did you first get introduced to cryptocurrency? So June 2011, a um, somewhat historic now article came out in Gawker that was on Silk Road, but it talked about this technology, Bitcoin. I had never heard of that, and I thought it sounded really interesting. So I started reading more about Bitcoin and just went down the veritable rabbit hole. I was going into my senior year of college and was still just really, really obsessed with this concept, so decided to write my undergraduate thesis on Bitcoin and my professors were very skeptical. I said at the time, even if Bitcoin fails, a future version of this decentralized cryptocurrency will succeed. After college, Olaf went on a kind of Jack Kerouac-esque journey, road tripping around the country and working as a lumberjack before landing in Oakland. Soon, he got a job at Coinbase, then a small cryptocurrency startup, where he famously took his entire salary in Bitcoin. All I had was like a bunch of really nasty lumberjack stuff. So I had like the sap covered uh, sweatshirt. And so on the way to the interview, I like stopped and picked up like some nice clothes and put them on and like tearing off the tags while I'm walking over there. I've known Olaf since I was 19. I always said in college that Olaf would get really, become really wealthy doing something kind of obscure or he would live in the mountains. And he actually ended up doing both after college. So I guess I was right. I came into school in 2008 and kind of the financial crisis. I think I've always been a little bit skeptical of the kind of blind trust that people have in financial systems that exist in the United States. So to me, one thing about uh, cryptocurrency is that um, although it's kind of technically complicated, it's fully transparent how it works. If you ask someone how the Federal Reserve works, I think it's a much more complicated question, actually, than like how Bitcoin works. Really? Bitcoin's very complicated. I, so, well, it's, it's complicated, but there is a very precise kind of mathematical definition of how it works. Just a lot of the world hasn't maybe realized it because the reality is we're dealing with a, a, a breakthrough technology that we haven't seen the likes of since the internet itself. Not everyone shares Olaf's perspective. Many think that we are in the midst of a cryptocurrency bubble, with rising prices fueled by rampant speculation. But Olaf says he still has faith in the underlying technology. What's exciting are the types of applications that today sound sort of sci-fi, uh, but I think could actually be really viable in the future. Think about like a, uh, a self-driving car. You, I could imagine a future where self-driving cars aren't owned by anyone. They actually own themselves. And like the software that's, that's on that car can hold you know, cryptocurrency and it can enter into various arrangements. Like it can go try to get its oil changed or something like that. And this sounds sci-fi, right? It sounds like a, a little bit out there right now. Um, but I think this is the type of thing that um, we're going to start seeing emerging for real. <laughs>